Welcome back and welcome to Talk of the Nation. Now, the rising cost of living remains a major issue on many minds. For instance, many in the transport sector are unsure whether to raise fares in line with the rising cost of fuel due to falling demand. Now, those in the real estate sector are also stuck as tenants prefer to flee rather than pay higher rents, while manufacturers are stuck with stocks in their warehouses amidst hefty costs such as taxation, stiff bank loan repayments, salaries, and the logical temptation, of course, to close down production with some now spending business operations, suspending business operations due to the challenges faced by many. Others are asking what can be done to alleviate the economic situation. Now, to help us understand what is really at stake, we do have the Executive Director of the Federation of Small and Medium Scale Enterprises, John Walgembe. Welcome to Talk of the Nation. Thank you for having me here. You know, this, on a lighter note, this yes. situation has been going on for some time. I'd like to know, how yes. are you coping up with the economic situation at stake? I avoid attending unnecessary meetings. <laughs> I try to use Zoom okay. where possible. And I also walk sometimes. Walk? Of course. Why? What's the problem with walking? That brings me to the point of, uh, you, you notice on the, on the road, on some days, let's say for Monday, there'll yes. be very many vehicles on the road. Yes. Then when it comes down to Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, mm -hmm. they are not there. Then again, Friday, they, they get back. What does this... People are trying to cope. You know, you report on Monday with the car, then in the middle of the week, you hustle. Then over the weekend, you pull out the car again. <laughs> so each person, I mean, it varies depending on the individual. There are people who stay so far from town with limited public transport options that they cannot afford to leave the car home. Mm -hmm. But for those who stay near, I think there are a number of options that they can adopt. I think those choices have to be on you. Why should you use three cars coming from the same home? You know, one to drop the child, one to drop the wife, one to drop the husband. You know, you can afford to share. And then there are a number of red sharing apps as well. So I think each of us in our personal lives, mm -hmm. we, can, uh, we can find ways of reducing our expenditure in the area of transportation. Uh, relating to that, that is the same dilemma that so many businesses are facing. Yes. Many of them are stuck with either rising the fair prices, mm -hmm. you know, or even cutting down on, you know, s uh, laying off workers. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to businesses in a situation like this? So I would give uh, three pieces of advice. One, you have to, what I would call, recalibrate. Look at your business, look at what you'll keep because there are certain product lines that you will find that are no longer profitable. So you need to recalibrate your offering. Two, you need to reposition yourself, you know? Mm -hmm. And repositioning does not mean that you have to increase that. Because many people have this temptation, I have to increase, I have to increase, I have to. But you know, some, for some products, consumers are price sensitive. For others, they are not. So if you raise a product in an, in, in a, if you raise the price for a product to which consumers are price sensitive, then you may be digging a hole for your business. So try to be very careful as you reposition yourself, particularly in the area of pricing. Mm. It could be that consumers can pay more if you give them better value. So reposition your, bi your, your business. And then replace. Replace might also mean replacing workers who are unproductive, you know, replacing things that are no longer adding value to their business and stuff. But don't, don't start from there. Many people want to start by replacing stuff. I keep warning that you know this stuff may, may actually be the key to your recovery. So be very careful as you lay off stuff because there's a limit to which that can make a difference. Yes, now last month we saw, we did see government debating with parliament on whether alleviating the tax burden yes. would help. Mm -hmm. I would like to pick your thoughts. Mm -hmm. uh, from where you sit, how is it going like for the SMEs? I mean, it's tough. Uh, government has extended the gesture by saying we're not introducing new taxes. But at the same time, they say they're going to focus on compliance. But they have also introduced a number of punitive measures. For instance, if you falsify accounts, you, you, you have a penalty of 100 million. This kind of prohibitive penalties, in my view, won't do much to help expand the tax, uh, the tax bracket. What government ought to do is to encourage businesses through the difficult times. If by saying you're going to focus on compliance, you're going to make sure that you milk the last cent from businesses, then I, I don't think this is a very smart strategy because you're going to cause businesses to close, and this won't help you long term as you seek to grow uh, domestic revenue. So my advice to government would be take it easy. It's tough. It's tough on you, we understand. It's tough on us as well. So 
let's try to accommodate uh, each other. Uh, can you predict how this will evolve over time? It's very hard. It's a very uncertain period. If you notice, the central bank has read the CBR uh, within a very short, short span of time to 7.5% and now to 8.5%. And what they're also saying is a very un uncertain period. Why? Because the causes are external. The government has limited control. So, for instance, we don't know. They are, uh, for instance, if you look at the Ukraine crisis, there are no peace talks taking place. You know, If you look at w uh, governments in the West, they are being toppled. Why? Because of the rising cost of living. If you look at the UK, for instance, the ent entire uh, transportation system is disrupted due to strikes and stuff. So it's a global problem, and we are lucky that we've, we are weathering it well so far. Now, with this same situation has seen people shift their, bus their businesses from the central business district to probably mm. upcountry, the mm. outskirts of uh, uh, mm. the, uh, the city. Mm. Do you support this? Of course. we already. Had, I, I personally advise businesses to leave the central business district during the COVID. I don't know why they are still around. In then what view, is going to happen? The model has completely changed. The customers are online. So you don't need to pay. Uh, for space at 2,000 US dollars. She's going to find you there. People are busy. People are working from home. There are a lot of technologies now. You just need to offer online value. And then people will find you. Secondly, people have gone to the suburbs. If someone stays in Nalia and their office is in Nalia, who tells you that they'll ever come to the central businesses with downtown? There's a lot of traffic, so many borders, so many what? So I would advise businesses, please, move where the clients are. Some of you are stuck in the central business district and you have no business there. You keep complaining, the economy is so bad, we are no longer seeing clients. The clients are in Nalia, the clients are in Perere, the clients are in Natete. They've moved on. They are in Busika. Please move where the clients are. So what happens to those people that invested billions, that borrowed billions and billions of loans to build these arcades? Yes. If you're, if you're sending away the, the arcade the, the speculator. Yeah. So if you're an arcade speculator, we assume you had a business plan, but my experience is you probably don't have a business plan. But this would be a good time for you to envision, to see how you can repurpose your building. If you go in Kampala anyway, you find that occupation is on the first and second floor. The third, the fourth, and the fifth floors are empty. So you could use these places as Airbnbs. You know, you could use them very well as Airbnbs. You could repurpose them, make sure they are furnished, so that when people come for meetings in town, they can get good rates. They can stay in some of these buildings at very affordable rates. So you need to get business experts to advise you, you know, because things are changing. The dynamics are changing. And a lot of businesses are going to move out. As we are speaking about uh, people shifting their businesses, you know, out of the, uh, of the CBD, yes. there is also that one person that is considering mm. to stop production or to suspend the business. Mm. What would you, I would like you to speak to them. Mm. Yes. What would you well, tell Well, I them? can't tell you don't stop because I, I don't really know how and why you're having to stop. You know, at some point, if you find that you're having to borrow to sustain this business and you see that the fundamentals are no longer holding, then you can as well stop. It's like a war. This is what they call a tactical retreat. You can't just keep going. If you don't have firepower anymore, you might as well rest and regroup and then attack. So as a business, ent as, a, as an entrepreneur, you don't just keep attacking, running a business, uh, come and buy and buy. No, if a business is not working, you can afford to rest, regroup, see if you can raise resources from family, borrow, whatever, and then uh, give it another shot. If the, the, there are no clients, if the sector is not growing and you think there's no potential, there's no shame in closing a business. You can open another. Mm -hmm. The important thing is that you, the general, eh, the general in the business, the entrepreneur, you're still alive. You know they are not dead heroes, right? No. So the important thing, therefore, is make sure that you're still in there, you're committed, even when that business closes pick a few lessons and see what else you can do. Do you know of any farms that are actually benefiting from this situation? Because we might be crying, you know, from this side, and then on the other side, people are merrymaking and making profits and seeing everything flourish. No, every situation definitely has beneficiaries. And uh, if you look at the high fuel prices, they definitely benefit some, some people. And uh, it's good for them, but it doesn't mean that they'll benefit forever. No, so if I'm um, one of those people, who are I mean, if you're running a f petrol station, for instance, you're not at this, you wouldn't be complaining because, you know, the people are giving you money. Yes, they may be taking less quantities, but they're paying you higher. So in terms of your bottom line, it's still sound. So there are sectors that, in my view, are doing very, very well and should be able to benefit from this situation. But if you're one of those, uh, the Baganda set away, 
be able to take meaning you shouldn't gloat you shouldn't gloat just because you're you're making a killing doesn't mean that that is how the situation will be so you need to take advantage of the windfall to, to, to make sure that you have savings for rainy day Thank you, John Warugembe, the Executive Director of the Federation of Small and Medium Scale Enterprises. We take a break and return with NTV Weekend Edition.